Okay, welcome back, Algebra 2. So today we're starting actually our last unit of the year. So we're going to talk about what we call exponential functions and what sort of goes hand in hand with exponential functions is something called logarithmic functions. So we're still going to keep talking about exponents. We've talked about all their properties. Maybe now let's try and work them into equations. All right, so our first focus is going to be exponential functions. So kind of the nicest form we want to look at here. A very nice exponential function looks as the form of y is equal to a times b to the x. So a few things to notice here. Hmm, why is this different than other things we've been dealing with? Well, this is one of the first times where x has actually been up in the exponent. So a lot of the year so far, we've done things like x squareds and x to the thirds and just x's. But we haven't done too much where x is actually the term up in the exponent. So that's what's going to be our new deal here. All right, so a and b are just numbers. And x is up in the exponent, which we do have to have a few restrictions here to actually make this exponential. The term b, it can't be negative, it can't be zero, and it actually cannot equal one. Well, why it can't equal one, if you have a one here, well, what's one to any power? That's just one. So one really gets rid of the exponential part that we're interested in. All right, so let's just try and look at some examples here. What is an exponential function, what isn't? All of these on the left are exponential functions because we see that, hmm, they're in our nice form where x is up in the exponent. Even if it's something like 3x here, this is still going to be exponential. It's just shifted around a little bit. I know a few of you might be asking, oh, on this first one, wait a minute. That doesn't quite look like our nice form a times b to the x, but it actually is. We have 6 to the x. There's our b to the x term. And it's really just times what number? Well, a is just 1 in that case. Okay, things that are not exponential functions. Well, all these on the right, the x is not in the exponent. This is just a line. Here's a polynomial, right? We've talked about a bunch of these things. There's not even any x's here, so it's not going to be exponential. This one, it does have x up in the exponent, but what violates is b cannot be 1. All right, so let's look at a few. If you want to pause it and try by yourself, let's just try and look at each equation. Decide either yes, it's exponential, or no, it is not. OK, this first one, y is equal to 3 times x squared. Yes or no, is it exponential? Well, it might be nice to write down our exponential form just to remind ourselves, a times b to the x, that's sort of our most common form. There are some other forms, but that's our most common one. Is this in that form? No. So this is not exponential. And the big reason, well, x isn't in the exponent. x is the base number here. All right, next equation, f of x is equal to 2.4 times 0.2 to the s to the x power, excuse me, is this exponential? Yes, it is. x is up in the exponent, and it's in our nice form, a times b to the x power. How about our last equation here? y is equal to 9 to the x. Well, x is up in the exponent. Is it in our nice form, y equals a times b to the x? It actually is. It's just, what's the value of a here? It's just 1, so we normally don't write it. So is it exponential? Certainly it is. All right, let's keep cruising. OK, we're going to look at a few graphs of these, see what an exponential graph might look like. All right, first off, I just want you to try and sketch a little graph. So just plot these points and connect them with some sort of line or curve. We've got negative 1, 7, 0, 5, 
1, 3, and 2, 1. So I'm going to plot these. There's negative 1, 7. Nope, that's wrong. Okay. Let's try again. Negative 1, 7 is up here. Then 0, 5. 1, 3, 2, 1. And if I connect those, it looks like it should be what sort of shape? Looks like a straight line. So if you had to guess, do you think I'd call this graph linear or exponential if it's a straight line? If it's a straight line, should I call it linear or exponential? Yes, indeed. This is just a line, so we call it linear. All right, we've seen these graphs before. Well, let's try another one. So if you want to try and graph this on your own before I do it, certainly feel free to do that. So I've got a table. I'm going to plot some points. I've got the point 1, 1 third. So that's over 1 and up a third. My graph's not perfect, but that's okay. Then I have the point 2, 1, 3, 3, and 4, 9. So my graph looks something like this. So do you think this graph looks linear or what we might call exponential? Well, is it a straight line? Nope. So it's not linear. This is an exponential graph. So some things to notice about an exponential graph is an exponential graph does have an asymptote, like where it flattens out. An asymptote is just a line your graph gets close to, but doesn't quite cross it. So an asymptote here would be right at zero. Because we see that our red line gets really close to that, it actually will never cross zero. So an exponential graph does have a horizontal asymptote. This particular one we'd call exponential growth. So there's kind of two general shapes of exponential graphs. One like we have here called exponential growth. Growth. Got an asymptote and it goes up. The other type, it's the same shape, it's just flipped around. So this graph we call exponential decay is the word for that. Okay, so exponential graphs have these nice curves. They have an asymptote. So exponential growth, like the graph we plotted and on the left here, those go up very, very quickly. Exponential decay is coming down and eventually flattening off. All right, so let's look at some of these, see what we can come up with. All right, first of all, let's look. Yes or no, is this an exponential function? Y is equal to 2 times 1.5 to the x. And you say... Very good. Yes, it is. It's in the right form. Y equals a times b to the x. X is up in the exponent. This is, in fact, exponential. Well, if I just want to evaluate a function, what does it mean to evaluate? That just means plug in whatever we know. So what do we know here? X is equal to 3. So I'm just going to plug in 3. And then I'm just going to grab my handy-dandy notebook and calculator, type in 2 times 1.5 to the third. And y is 6.75. We evaluated our function. All right, how about can you try? First of all, yes, this is exponential. It's a times b to the x. Can you evaluate when x is equal to negative 2? Go!
So to evaluate, we're just going to plug in negative 2 for x. You can just type all this into a calculator if you want. I'm just going to work it out by hand so we can get a little practice with our exponents. Well, what does it mean to have a negative exponent? That just means you flip it into a fraction. So we get negative 8 times 1 over 4 squared. Well, what is 4 squared? It's 16. So that's just negative 8 over 16, which is negative 1 half. If you type that into a calculator, you should get the same thing, negative 1 half. All right, so here's a common form for yearly growth or yearly decay. So there's our words again. Growth is getting bigger. Decay is getting smaller. And it actually is our form a times b to the x. It's just our letters are switched out a little bit. So a is still a, but instead of b, that number is going to be 1 plus a little something, or it could be 1 minus something. And instead of x here, we're just going to put it for a t, because we're generally talking about time for modeling these. So this really is still our normal exponential form. Well, let's talk about what these different variables mean. Well, t, you probably guess, stands for time. And since we're talking yearly growth, that's going to be in years. What r stands for is the growth rate or decay rate. So that's just how fast something is increasing or decreasing on an exponential graph. So a lot of times you might hear something like, oh, I'm investing for retirement and I'm getting a 5% return. Well, that just means your growth rate is 5%. Or if you buy a new vehicle, you say, oh, it depreciates 8% per year. That just means your decay rate is 8%. So we have R is the rate, T is the time. A here is just whatever is your starting amount or initial amount. And then Y is just your ending amount. Okay, so let's look at a few of these. Very common model, it's actually quite useful. All right, so I give you an equation, y is equal to 15, 1 plus 0 0.08 to the t. First, we're going to identify which number is the initial amount. Where is my growth or decay rate? And then we're actually going to evaluate when t is equal to 7. All right, so we just set our initial amount. That's what A stands for. So here our initial amount is just 15. Our rate here, R, is just 0 0.08, which is really what percent? That's 8%. And for this one, any ideas how I could tell if this is going to be growth or decay, just based off the equation? Yeah, this one's going to be growth just because we have a plus here. So since we're adding a little bit on each year, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, so now just to evaluate when t is seven, I'm just gonna take my equation, plug in a seven for the t, and then type it into my calculator. And we will start getting into some sort of nasty decimals. I'm generally going to try and round to three places just to be consistent. So really what this means when I plug in 7 is if I start with 15, like if it's $15 or something, and it grows 8%, after 7 years I have 25.7. 
All right, cool. All right, now take a minute, see if you can try a slightly different equation. So here we're starting with 25,000. Our rate is 0 0.09 or 9%. And would this one be exponential growth or exponential decay? This one's going to be decay since we're subtracting off a little bit each year. This amount is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so then all that's left is to evaluate when t is equal to 5. So we'll just take our equation, 25,001 minus 0 0.09, plug in a five for t, and then just grab your trusty calculator and type everything in. You do wanna be a little careful. Make sure you type in your parentheses properly. Other than that, shouldn't be too difficult. So we're right around 15,600. All right, a few more, now getting into our important stuff. Actually using this, I-R-L. All right, so let's try and write an exponential equation. There are 40 rare weasels in a colony. Each year, the population increases by 9%. So let's use our yearly model. So A and then one plus or minus R to the T. We don't use plus or minus simultaneously, it's just sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Okay, so writing our equation. What do we know? What is this 40 representing? Well, that's how many weasels there are. It's like an amount. It's a starting amount. So that's going to go on for A. How about this 9%? Well, that's how fast this thing is increasing. So I'm going to have to use a 9 somehow. And do I want to use a positive here or a negative? Should it be 1 plus 9 or 1 minus? Since we're growing, it's increasing, we should use plus. So we're tempted to say this. Y is equal to 40. 1 plus 9 to the T. However, something is slightly erroneous here. Anyone see what it is? It is this number 9. The number 9 is not the same as 9%. So remember, 100% really just means you have one whole item. That's like, oh, I got 100%. I completed one test. So if you have like a 25%, that means you really have 0.25. If you have 9%, really what do you have as a decimal? 0 0.09. So we're gonna have to make sure we actually use the proper decimal form in our equation. So y is equal to 40, one plus 0 0.09 to the t power. All right, maybe try the last one by your own. I'll give you a minute, see what you can come up with. There are 50 kilograms of radioactive element in storage. Each year, the amount of radioactive material decays or decreases by 3%. Take a minute, brainstorm, see what you can come up with.
All right, so let's see what we've got. Hmm. Do we have a starting amount? Yep, our starting amount is 50. Here, since this is decaying, should I use a plus or should I use a minus in my parentheses here? Since it's decaying or decreasing, I should use a minus. And how fast or what rate is it decreasing at? 3%, which is 0 0.03. And there we go. You're certainly free to leave it like that. If you're someone who likes to make something look slightly better, I can actually do this subtraction if I want. What's 1 minus 0 0.03? It's 0 0.97. So if you want to simplify it and write your equation like this, 50 times 0 0.97 to the t, that's certainly fine. But if you want to just leave it as is, that is certainly acceptable as well. All right, so that's our intro to exponential stuff today. Definitely going to be some uses for it. As always, feel free to contact me if you have questions. Um, I will be sporadically hosting Google Meets as like question and answer sessions. So if you want to drop on one of those as well, I'll email details out to that whenever, you know, a couple of days before I have one. All right, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.